What's poppin' everybody? Welcome to another edition of Lights Out. This is episode 68, presented, of course, by our friends over at Prize Picks. Make sure you download that Prize Picks app and go ahead and use the code Lights Out for an additional $100 matched upon what you put down. We'll get more into that later because we got some serious business to get into. We got my boy Light here, no camera needed. We got the multiversal Agent Smith, okay, in Cosmos. And of course, you got Big Phil right here, ready to chat it up. Gentlemen, how the hell are you boys doing? I'm doing great. I mean, I know that I don't have much to talk about, so I'm going to go serious? first. I think Light got a lot to talk about, but I'm doing great. You know what I'm saying? Got my shades on, got my Demon Slayer shirt on, got my Demon Slayer posters in the background. You know, everything's going pretty well. Going on a content grind. The only thing that I have that is unfortunate to say to all of you is that I'm not, I'm unfortunately deconfirmed for Smash Con, so I'm going to be staying home and watch partying it. Wait, what? Why aren't you going to Smash Con? I had a long talk with Void, and we both considered, we both considered everything and considered that, what the heck? I don't know what happened. Anyways, go on. Oh, all right. Anyway, we, we both considered that it was just best for me to stay home after moving because my money situation is not the best. And it would be very expensive to go to SmashCon, so I'm going to stay home and stream the tournament from home. Okay. Nothing wrong with a good watch party. I do it all the time. It's not bad. Uh, we'll miss you, though. We'll miss you. Will you? Yeah, you jackass. <laughs> 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 well, all right. No Cosmos at SmashCon, but we got him here. That's nice. Light, how about you? Can we count on you for SmashCon at least? You're taking the coward's way out. You make more money if you just won. <laughs> Unfortunately, I play Pirate Mithra. I can die at any time. I'm not playing you... Fox, who has the best recovery in the game. Okay, well, not only is that wildly inaccurate, <laughs> but you were you were my goat. I watched you do things no other man can do. And then Don't the worry. crew did it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right after me. Don't worry, I'm going to be back. I'm not quitting. I'm, I'm not quitting. I'm not going to be Mars. I'm not quitting. I'm going to come back. And Mars came back, too. So even if I did quit, you know that you can never quit Smash. You always come back. Yeah, but he came back with a bag. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but, um, yeah, I'll be at SmashCon. I've been practicing very hard to get ready for SmashCon. Yes, you have. I, lights out, ma. Yeah, I saw your uh, performance at a local the other day. Not bad. I mean, you did get reset by D-Dog. Huh? Yeah, that's Qu- that's Quandale Daniel Lincoln. That's Quandale Daniel Lincoln. You, yeah, yeah, Quandale. Uh, yeah, but good job he winning mocked. that. He he chose to go win his local, probably about two hundred bucks, as opposed to getting forty two hundred at DreamCon. Very interesting. Okay, <laughs> decision First of all, No, we're not, you're First not about all. to instigate this. Very interesting. Okay, so are we just gonna get on to? We're just gonna get into my journey since coming back. You want to do this real I quick? Would, I would love to. Okay. Um, for one, tell me if I lag because I'm in a hotel Wi-Fi. But uh, all right, cool. So I mean, I'm actually like I wish I had a camera for this moment because I'm actually extremely depressed about DreamCon. Me too. Like, me too. no, no words can explain how depressed I am. I want to go so bad, and I got on the flight four hours before DreamCon or five hours. Like I was supposed to land like four or five hours before DreamCon, right? Yep. And when we got on the flight, there's like there's an unexpected flight delay. And I'm like, okay, I got like four hours to burn. That's no big deal. And they were like, okay, uh, there's something wrong with a panel that's not gonna affect the safety of the plane. But you know, we still want to check it out anyways. I'm like, okay. And then they're like, we're deboarding. I'm like, okay. Damn. <laughs> and there's still like three hours to go until like like I can still make it, right? And then they they're like, we're gonna deboard because there's another plane that um that you guys can get on. And then we get off and there's there's no other plane. Oof. <laughs> so yeah, so they're like they just have us sitting there again for another hour, and then they're like, you know, we're gonna put you guys back on the same plane whenever it's finished. And then I just keep checking the timing. And eventually my ETA is like 440 and the tournament starts at four o'clock. So I'm just like, all right, I'm leaving. (laughs) There's nothing I can do about this. And I literally was just like depressed the the entire day, probably the entire weekend, honestly. So, yeah, DreamCon 
missing that really sucks. Yeah. yeah, happy Phil. I got that out. You went. You had a good time. Fuck you. I had an amazing time, and I was. You know what? I had been campaigning to get us on uh, on Hood Jeopardy. I was like, let me and Light play, and Leland was kind of about it, but then Light didn't show up, so I had to kind of abandon that dream. So uh, unfortunate. But there's, there's always next year. He, we're on the radar. We're on the we're on the radar. They know who we are, which is nice. Radar. I would have um, killed that shit. But it was very funny to watch Shattuck just smile and laugh the whole time as he just secured the easiest bag of all time. Well, kind of what you did. Kind of what you did last year, right? I mean, granted, yeah, Atomic Atomic put up a good fight. No shade to Atomic. He's very good, Rob. Uh, but yeah, you man. should have been top two light. It was crazy. I know. I let these 15-year-olds steal a bag. They don't, they don't even know what to do with it. Pay a bill, for God's His sake. dad's taking it. No, <laughs> it's going to the college fund. His yeah. dad's just Mexican Phil. Whoa, <laughs> he's taking his money. <laughs> that is insane, but maybe. Uh, either way, I think it makes sense because he would be more responsible with the money. Congratulations to Shattuck for winning DreamCon. <laughs> we'll see you next year. Not in Austin, though. Not in Austin. Fun fact the Austin Convention Center is having renovations, so DreamCon will be in a new location next year. As for where that location is, uh, TBD. Let's I'm make told. sure it's not in Texas so Shattuck doesn't go. Well, I've heard I've heard some <laughs> different rumors about it that I'm not gonna say, but it's definitely it's definitely gonna be somewhere different. We'll see. We'll see when the time comes. But uh, uh, speaking of different things, I think we should go ahead and jump into some tournaments that took place last. It's actually a great weekend for Smash last weekend. If you guys didn't tap in, uh, we'll start with the what I would consider the main event uh, that took place. I'm talking, of course. About Kaloon featuring Karibi. How do you how do you say it, Cosmos? Kulon featuring Kagaribi. Okay, Kulon featuring Kagaribi. Because for some reason they just decided that you know what we're going to combine these tournaments and just have ourselves a good old time. And that's exactly what they. Yes. Oh, riddles, riddles. So riddles. The reason you weren't on this week is because we actually had a good week for Smash to talk about. I was going to hit you up and see what your schedule is next week, my nigga. Next week, my boy, my boy. Is that okay? Because I was like, I was like, why have you on a hype week when I can have you on a, a week week? And then we have you, and that's how actually turns our podcast into a hype week. You know what I'm saying? That's how Big Phil operates. So I'll be sliding in those DMs like you a thick bitch 5'2". You know what I'm saying? I'll come to you. Uh, Appreciate you, big dog. I thought, anyway. just, I thought we just agreed no Kazuya's on this podcast. I, I you, well, He plays Terry, too, and that's my dog. So we out. Oh, wow. man. That's my dog. No, and, and it'll be better when you have an actual webcam, you jackass. Why are you talking shit so much right now? What's up with you? I'm not talking shit. Who, who hit your, who hit you your really feel that dream bomb, bro? It's getting real hard right now. I'm not talking yeah. shit. I'm not talking shit. I'm just having fun with my friends. Anyway, let's talk about this friends. tournament, which might not have been fun for everybody. First place, Mia. Second place, Akola. Third place, Spargito. Fourth place, Level 1, who, by the way, I have a personal problem with Level 1. Robbed us of Zachary versus Sparga with his stupid ass tune link. The nerve of this guy. Get the hell out of brackets, Jim. Honestly, honestly, it was better that he won. And listen, I'm the biggest Zachary fan. Oh, He's my go. favorite player. He's still considered my son. He's my favorite player. I love that guy. But every single time Fargo plays Zachary, it's a wash. Get, and it's I, not fun to watch that, as a Zachary fan. Listen, Zachary would have gave Spargo a hell of a fight. You kick out of your mind. Dorogimi also fifth. Ryuga, who went on a crazy... I shout to Rihoa, who went on a crazy run to get seventh place. Asimo gets seventh as well. So notable absences from top eight include Shuton. My boy Alice was killing it, though. Alice beat the hell out of Hurt, who's ass... Where'd Hurt? Is Hurt even on here? Back-to-back tournaments. Hurt and got his ass whooped. All right. Oh, there he is. There he is. 25th. Nugle. All right. So Hurt, <laughs> Hurt getting cooked. <laughs> I thought you liked Hurt. I do like Hurt, but he, he, he's getting sauced. So those are the results of that tournament. Anything surprising to you guys? Anything standing out? I mean, yeah. it was the first time that Spargo lost to a cola since the Ludwig Smash Invitational. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. And real quick, before you guys start going, I want to I want you guys to tell me: is this thumbnail, is this potential thumbnail for this podcast too mean? You guys tell me. Is this potential podcast for this thumbnail too mean? Is this are potential thumbnail this? too mean? Are, are you? 
It was, it was, yeah, it was a mock up. Oh, ain't my no God. God. In the world. It was a mock up. Somebody mocked it up and sent it to me. They're like, what do you think about this? Yeah. I was like, this is kind of funny. <laughs> bro, that's my son, bro. You can't be doing that. Uh, <laughs> went, put I, it thought it was, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I love it. I didn't I commission it. it. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> I love it. He's gonna put it up anyway. <laughs> of course he is. We'll see. He doesn't care about our opinion. For real. But I love Spargo. <laughs> Bro, that that set though was pretty freaking crazy. I cannot lie. I don't there was just a lot of he plays he plays Mithra like how he plays Steve. He just does a lot of unorthodox shit that works because it works in his head. You know, like it doesn't work in our heads because we're not, I guess, as like we just don't have a slot process. We're not as good, yeah. You know, but like when he did uppy to cover that, uh, bro, to cover when clouds he up behind, at the ledge, my eyes widened. I was like, oh really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my eyes. I was like, I never would have thought of that to be an option ever. Yo, I'm not gonna lie though. I didn't see the set originally at first, and the first clip I saw was him forward smashing twice with Pyra, and I just immediately thought in my head, so you just spam forward smash with every character. <laughs> <laughs> but then I actually watched the set, and I'm like, yo, he is moving, bro. Like, he was hitting every auto cancel, no lag on any of his moves. He was an upbeat. He wasn't even using upbeat. It's like an out of shield option. He was using upbeat to, like, just get off me, like, before you were even on my shield. It was it was very good. You can tell Akola really wanted that win. He played really well. Yeah, and I mean, I definitely have to give props to Akola because when you're essentially beating every other player in the world, anytime you play them, maybe you have like the amount of losses you have, you can count on both of your hands and the amount of losses that is on both of those hands, one of them hands is one singular player being Spargo. So to pick up essentially one specific character just for one player is a very huge mental stack because if you lose to that player with that character, it it definitely takes a huge mental toll on you. So to be able to pick up that character, basically work on that character for like essentially almost a year or maybe over a year and then still lose to that player with that character and keep at it and then eventually beat that player, like that has to be, that is a true testament to his dedication to the game. So I definitely have to give him props for that. Um, I'm honestly surprised that he lost in winner's finals to Mia and didn't end up going Pyramithra against Mia because I know that Spargo usually always likes to go Pyramithra against Game of Watch. Leo likes to go Pyramithra against Game of Watch too. And Leo and Spargo both, well, Leo and Spargo both beat Meister and Spargo, whenever he plays Mia, beats Mia with Py- Pyramithra. So I'm surprised that even though he lost the first set, he did win the next set, but like they were back and forth. He didn't just try out Pyramithra against Mia to see what happened. It is very interesting that he didn't, but I think the reason, like, I don't think there's really, you're gonna, they're not gonna see a lot of his Mithra unless he, like, has a change of heart now. It's not surprising that we haven't seen a lot of his Mithra because, you know, that, that character was designed to kill Spargo. You know, like, he plays Steve at the end of the day. He plays the best character in the game. And even though he's lost occasional sets, he very rarely loses with Steve. And if he does, he can adapt with Steve. We've seen sets where he loses to somebody and then he'll fight that person again. And he adapt and absolutely steamrolled them with Steve, you know? So like I'm not surprised that we haven't seen a switch, but maybe we will in the future for the reason that you said. You know? You know, I, I get a I gotta give you some credit for that Cosmos. I feel like your influence helped reignite his belief that his pyramithra could get the job done. I mean, you're very And you know what? Spargo. It actually did because I saw his tweet. After he you won, right? He called me cool. Yeah, he called me cool. And then he followed up saying, you know what? I guess I just do got to believe in pyramithra. And then I responded to it saying, believe in her. And, I, and you know what? It was more like, you know, Goku and Gohan. I was right behind him charging the blast while he was fighting Spargo and he ended up winning, bro. That's just what happened. Damn, so you're telling me you moved to Mexico and still betrayed them? You just love betraying your own countries. That's true. Yeah, I do. Wow. Yeah. Where, where's the shades? This, like, this, this, this Japanese fuck. expedition is <laughs> the American USA Avengers no longer exists. All we gotta do is get Cosmos to move to Japan and he'll start giving all their notes to Switzerland, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Roflo on the come up. I've seen it oh, happen. Man. But no, nah, it was a good tournament, man. Uh, I thought Akola versus Spargo, uh, just because of the character selection, man, that could have been 
that could have been up there with, with maybe like definitely up there with be- some of the best sets I've seen this year for sure, especially the implication of Akola finally getting that big win on Spargo. Um, can't wait to see them rematch, but kudos to Spargo, man. He definitely avenged himself in more ways than one. Last time with the Japan kind of got washed. This time loses the Dorogimi a little early, comes back, beats Dorogimi, go takes it all the way up to uh third place, which I thought was awesome. Um, for sure. I thought it was interesting. Also, when, revenge. Yeah, when he beat level one, which he got revenge on too from the last time he was there as well. When he beat level one, I thought it was interesting because I was like, oh damn, like he always cooks like a cola and Mia. Did not expect the ages to be the difference maker. So the foregone conclusion that Spargo would win the tournament at that point, actually getting interrupted. But love seeing Spargo do well. Glad he's uh motivated. And that right there, that looked like a top three of the Lumi rank to me, man. Those three names duking it out as you would expect. That's accurate. Oh, well, no, I would not say they are top three on the Lumi rank. Of this like, season right now, it's definitely Hurt or Sonic's. On the- Sonics, yeah, yeah, like Sonic's. Maybe, yeah, you're right. You're a Sonic's over Spargo for sure this season, but like you know, top five, I would say, top five, six. Like I will say, I, I mean, I'm pretty sure we we probably all think it here. I genuinely think that Sonic's is the best player in the world right now. I think Sonic's is number one. I think I think he is a choker, like a hot choker. He hasn't gotten first once this year, but I think everyone knows he's a choker. And other than like they know like when he's playing his best, like yeah, he he's the best player in the world. And like you I think own victories over him. Convenient. Huh? And you own victories over him. Convenient. Yeah, but I but I, I gotta stay <laughs> humble. I mean the dude the dude actually shitted on me last time he played me. Like the dude played very well. Yeah. I started to adapt towards the end, but I mean, that's just how some sets go where it's like he's like, I gotta do this before he figures this out because he knows all my habits and he played it really fucking well. Like I do think I I don't know. It's been a while since I played him again, but it's just like that. I think he I think once he like breaks that block, it's gonna be very hard for anyone to beat him. And I mean we've seen him versus Akola, and I, I think we saw him versus Mia too. I don't quite remember that. But uh I mean he just kind of washed he washed them. He and washed them priority, all, you know? was a, yeah, poor priority. I think Mia got the reset, didn't he? But um I think Mia did get the reset. He did get the reset, but Sonic still handled business because that's what he does. Yeah, no. I think we got to see where it goes. I mean, obviously times are always changing and Japan grinds way heavier than us because the game just way more active and they're all closer together. So but maybe they've gotten grinds harder than Sonic's. I can tell you that. Yeah. I was going to say maybe they've gotten even better, but Sonic's is a grinder and that, that is a hard thing to come across. I think that's why you see so much inconsistency in the top level in America or in NA all over here because NA is just not, we're not grinders anymore because this is just, we follow the stereotypical trend of, Oh, this game's been out for like five years. Like, yeah, can we just can we just go to the next game? But then you got people who are just way more dedicated than us, and those people deserve the wins that they're getting. I mean, we we've, we've also gained and lost a lot of things, so it was more like we gained things with our motivation, and then our motivation died when we lost those things because all of the I like, agree. all of the circuits that we circuits that we had were based in the United States and like. America mainly like some of them were like mm-hmm. obviously the smash world tour was like worldwide but it was mainly based in the states um so like whenever like it ended up dying down both panda and smash world tour dying down it was definitely a big hit for both of us and it's like for Japan they didn't really go to too many things they had some things in the smash world tour but like at the end of the day like those tournaments still there still had no money until the championships but like we had money yeah the, 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 those tournaments you right so yeah for sure. we, we definitely had like a lot more like a fa- a a higher cliff to fall off of when we did fall, they didn't really fall too much. So it's like they definitely still had their motivation at their highest highs, on top of still just being like dedicated to the game and grinders. That's a very good point that you're making. I honestly would just argue they've been on a steady slope the entire game that probably slightly went up because yeah. they've never we lost like all these opportunities and we were like hide the bus stuff and they were like, well, we never made money in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. You very, know, very true. But People forget. That I remember that 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 one tweet that that Gact made. I think it was whenever like Smash World Tour died or something or, in, or I don't remember when it was, but it was like something money. Related and then Gak made a tweet saying Japanese player would be happy even to win one dollar at a tournament. I'm mm. like, damn, well, if I won one dollar, I still wouldn't give a fuck. I need well, more. Well, I'll tell you this. I remember when they would there was always that joke that Kameme always turned up when the money was on the line when he came to the state. No. That was very accurate. I had no idea it was fueled by the fact that he has a kid, 
But nonetheless, that <laughs> month, he was playing for them dollars. Okay? You ain't going to tell me that I'm out of the Kamehame. He's part American, if you ask me. That was playing for them dollars. So, yeah, there's something to be said about when money's on the line and not on the line. But kudos uh, for sure. It's a great tournament to watch. Always got a shout out to my boy, Zach Ray. You know, he just comes back yeah. and, and just does. Like, Tom P got like 129th. Hurt gets 25th. Zach Ray, who barely even plays the game, just shows up in Zach Ray playing place. League of Legends, coming back and not playing Smash for three months. Can you imagine party. if this kid just actually just sat there and just grinded for a whole month? It's over. It's over. You kidding me? I think he could play, I think he could play any character he wants. He's Good. just different, bro. Definitely. King of fundies. We love to see it. I'm mad we didn't get him versus Spargo, but it's all good. Uh, predictions on how Spargo and Akola and Mia will do at Super Smash Con real quick. I think Spargo, this revenge tour is looking good. He got washed at the last Smash Con. Doesn't happen a lot because Spargo's a goat. I think he gets top three at the next one. Calling it right now. This Supernova, yeah. he's there. Top three. Give him Spargo. Uh before we talk about Supernova, since we're leading into Supernova, I actually want to mention that I have a lot of faith in Leo right now, especially after he won. That oh, we'll talk recently. about Goat soon. We'll talk about Goat yeah, soon. Yeah, but but I just think since we're talking about about Supernova, yeah. I think Leo is. I think he's upset that he ended up losing to Spargo at Smash Factor, mm -hmm. um, and that he's losing. He's been losing to him more consistently recently, and I think he definitely does care a lot. Like when I talked to him, he he said that he was really inspired recently, and that's why he was practicing a lot for his Smash Factor. So I think. That honestly, if any of those three players run into Leo, I think that Leo's going to end up winning, even I like a cola, because I know that Leo struggles against Steve too. I know that he's not happy against losing to that Steve. So I, like I think it. Leo would actually bring it back. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. So is it safe to say, gentlemen, that you would bet on Leo? Going on a top eight run at Supernova when the time comes? Is it safe to say that? Now, now, I don't know if I can bet on Leo to get a top bear run, but tell me what I can bet, bet on. Phil. Well, Jim, I'll tell you what you can bet on. Our friends at Prize Pick want to take it, or, uh, take you <laughs> to the next level with your gambling needs. You can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1000 while watching Team USA rack up the gold, baby. From low and select player stat projections on Tuesday to help with your lineup hit, or getting your entry fees back if you're losing lineups pop up on Fridays. Prize Picks is available in more than 30 states across the country. That includes California. That includes Texas. That includes Georgia, baby. Any listen, if you're in that state, it's time to make a date with Prize Picks. You can highlight your winnings with me. If you actually win, because I love to hear when people actually win. Me, for example, look, USA Basketball, I'm going to tell you right this. I saw that team was assembled. And the first decision I made was like, boom, I'm going right to prize picks. Y'all know how much money I've made betting on those gems. I mean, are you kidding me? You think Serbia's taking down Team USA? South Sudan's taking down the French? You're lucky. There. I'm surprised they're even oh. in a bracket. I'm surprised they haven't surrendered yet. That's how much faith I have in Team USA when it comes to handling business on that basketball court. So... If you're like me and you have a lot of faith in your picks, make sure you download the Prize Picks app today and use code Lights Out for your first deposit match of up to $100. That's code Lights Out on Prize Picks for your first deposit match of up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy when you pick Prize Picks. When did you guys get such synergy, bro? When you, you were gone, gone for yeah, three months. You've been gone a while, nigga. <laughs> Damn, bro. Y'all was really working on that. Y'all turned off the screen. You're like, all right, Cosmo, let's try again. He's like, uh, you know what else you can bet on? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reality was, I I haven't got top eight in like almost a year and a half. So I was like, in my time, it might be time for me to be a commentator. Time to learn these tra transitions. And then I got top eight and I stopped. But I started seeing my rock got some competition. <laughs> You've been doing a fantastic right. job, my boy. But uh. You're not the only one who's been doing a fantastic job. We hinted at it. We teased it a little bit. We talked about it. But now we're going to jump right into it. Let me tell you something. If you didn't pay attention this past weekend, you missed a real tour. You missed a real event. Because Leo, MK Leo won warehouse number four with wins. Just great wins. I mean, he took out Zamba. Look at Shiny Marks in there in third. Sky J in fourth. Mute Ace and Ice Knight in fifth. Mugen and Goblin, a little Roy Renaissance over here with the double seventh places right there. A lot of good talent at this event, man. I see Jazo in the bracket, Chunky Kong. A lot 
Omega. A lot of good folks were at this tournament, but none could overcome the power of GOAT as he went off to take first place at this event. I was sad I wasn't able to stream it because I wasn't home. But nonetheless, I kept up in the streams and I watched him handle business. I don't know, man. I love Zama, but them, them Mickey Leo jokes ain't really holding up as well. You know what I'm saying? Zombarney. Listen. Zombarney's the new thing I'm hearing about. Zombarney. Zombarney, That's man. Crazy. You can't mess with GOAT. Leo gets first place at Warehouse 4, gentlemen. How are we feeling about it? Bro, honestly, this is why you can't be talking shit about people like that, bro. <laughs> if you get lazy for a moment and they just decide they want to bounce back... Bro, these sets are these matches are not close. Like, bro, like that's, that's the thing. Like, you get lazy oh and then you decide you want to bounce back. It's not like you try to bounce back and you work. You just decide. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna be washed no more. That's what Leo does. Yeah, he really does do that, bro. I know you saw like some of the clips that Leo did to Zamba. Those shits were insane, bro. It was dirty. Like. It's, I think everyone can agree, and maybe it's just because of Joker, but I feel like it's because of Leo. For some reason, when Leo's playing good, it just feels like he's the best player in the world. Like it just, like it's it just comes like out. Butter. Yeah, bro. It's like moves that don't auto cancel, auto can- like this man could forward smash you and back air you in the same move. I don't, I don't know, man. Like he just does shit <laughs> that don't add up. Like, <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're saying, bro. I know exactly what you're getting at. I, I think the, the greatest thing is, too, like, and I remember, like, up, even last year on the podcast, like, you were saying it, you were screaming it to the heavens. Just play Joker. Learn the matchups. Optimize it. You are the best with this character for a reason. And he has really embraced that. And the results have definitely been mirroring it as of late. I, I do like the fact he still keeps the Aegis on the side. I think that's a great idea. If you're going to have a secondary, I'd rather see Aegis than, like, that crusty Roy he was using or, you know, freaking Byleth at this point in the meta. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> definitely think it was the right decision. Now, I will admit, I will admit, I think Leo had a little bit of help. He didn't have to fight Shiny Mark because Shiny Mark lost early to a Falco um, and then proceeded to uh, get eliminated by Zamba right before he made it to Grand final. So that's what happened. Didn't fight Mute Ace either. Yeah, he didn't fight Mute Ace either. Um, but I mean, that ain't Ghost's fault. That ain't Ghost's fault. You got to make it the GOAT. They can only fight who's in yeah. front of them. They ain't got nothing to do with Leo. Leo, hey, Leo, follow his path. Just because y'all got knocked off of yours, that got nothing to do with GOAT. Okay, so let's get that settled right now. Okay, the way he was playing, it wouldn't have mattered anyway if you ask me personally. He was on fire. He was on fire, chat. It was crazy. It was beautiful to watch. Did you watch? Do we know Shiny Mark's going to be at SmashCon? I hope so. I'm pretty sure he is. Yeah, that will be a very interesting turn of events because... um. Obviously, he got third this week, but he won Smash Factor. That's yeah. what Wait, they're saying yeah. Shiny Mark's not going to Smash. Why not? Not why? He said he has exams. Oh. What? Man, wow. them exams. Boy, get in the tournament. Them exams going to be waiting for you when you get back. Ah, uh, one negative two match about the way. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how unfortunate, guys. You know, we'll get them next time. <laughs> get them next time. That's crazy, bro. Wow. My uh, I'm just making a resurgence just for you, Light. What kind of exam? Man, I was gonna I was gonna make a whole rant about Shiny Mark and like what to expect, but I guess we're expecting nothing now. Dude, what kind of exams are taking place in like the middle or end of all middle of August? Like can't a whole different can a whole different like continent, bro. Yeah, like, yeah but the you but, in Guatemala, that's but the, Mars. the weather's gotta be like re- relatively the same if it's like if it's like sunshine, like isn't that when you're supposed to have like classes off? Maybe he's taking summer classes, my man. I don't know what to tell you. Well, if you're taking summer classes, does it really matter about making an exam? Oh, you're asking two well, people who just didn't go to college. Why are you actually that? actually three? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought you were a dropout. My fault. <laughs> my fault, OG. <laughs> <laughs> the man never we showed all up. Gave it up chat. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, man. Oh, that's well, unfortunate. I was excited. I was excited. Back to SmashCon. If we're talking about people who we think are going to make top eight, there's always one person I can count on who I think is going to make top eight for free. And he's never talked about because he only goes to the big shit. 
And that's the man, Tweak, bro. I think Tweak has a good shot of winning SmashCon. I think Tweak has a good shot of winning any tournament that he shows up to. True. It just depends on if he runs into a Steve, usually, because he sucks versus Steve. But he's been changing up that. He's been winning a lot of matchups over the course of this last year that he just that are just out of character for him to win. Like at Genesis, we saw him win versus T, and he says that Pac-Man is one of Diddy Kong's worst matchups you know like he's getting better at a lot of his bad matchups and i think i don't know if it was a cola or a different steve but he was playing very well versus them i i just think that tweak someone you could always count on you know he's a grinder like sonics and you know he plays with sonics a lot too and he just has a creative mind so i think there's a very huge chance that he could win this tournament and i mean last time he fought mia he like did very well i'm pretty sure it was game five it was at smash con i'm pretty sure yeah I feel confident that Tweak def I mean, yeah, Tweak as good as Tweak is, it is kind of funny. Like he's like sometimes we un he's under the radar. Maybe maybe because we haven't seen him at an event in a little while. Um and he's not as vocal. syrup, by the way. Yeah, My fault, not, but go on. He's not as vocal on social media and stuff like that. But no, nah, nonetheless, like we know Tweak is an absolute beast, uh, for sure. And there's a reason he's always vying for that number one spot in the United States. So I'm I'm eager to see uh, how my boy will perform as well. I'm eager to see how all you guys will perform. We're not going to do too much of a deep dive into Smash Con. It's, it, we haven't gotten that final bracket out to get those projections. But when we do, hopefully it'll be next week when we have Riddles on the show as well and we can get his insight uh, as well, which I think will be sick. But uh, that was a lot of good stuff, like I said, guys, going on in the Smash world. But I actually do want to keep it locked on uh, Supernova, a.k.a. Smash Con, um, for another reason, if you guys will give me one second to bring that up, I will do just that. There's a number of cool actual side events happening at this event. I wanted to get your, your thoughts on the biggest one being this is an, ex an exhibition match here. Mango and Spargo versus Zane and MK Leo doubles in both games with a thousand dollars on the line. Um, it breaks so down angry. like this Zane and Leo. We'll go head to head against Mango and Spargo in both ultimate and melee doubles best of five. So I mean, I think that's actually pretty sick. I honestly think Spargo Mango wins Clear this. Both. They win both. both. Yeah, I think Spargo Mango wins this in both. But <laughs> hey, man, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I don't even I can't remember the last time I saw Leo play melee. I know I entered melee at this event, too, but. It did, nothing nothing's popping up in my head what do you guys think i think spargo and mango win for the reason that yeah zane has been playing ultimate but it's doubles right so like Dubbies. yeah this man plays cloud and doubles he'll be fine he'll carry hard enough and then on top of that do you guys remember when we had like the melee side event at um summit and Spargo beat Riddles and Cola. And for reference, for people who don't know, when Riddles and Cola aren't playing Ultimate during a bracket, they just go to the melee setups and play melee all the time with each other. And Spargo, who just doesn't do that, beat both of them. So, yeah, yeah. I think I think Spargo's going to definitely free up the melee side, at least. Spargo yeah. and Mango. I think it just comes comes down to, like, even though Zane has been playing Ultimate for a while, um, Mango is just more experienced at like multiple platform fighters and Smash Ultimate is not similar to Melee, but um, I'll say just to, to put a blunt, I, I believe Mango is better than Zane at Ultimate and Spargo is better than Leo at Melee. Even though Leo is like the GOAT of doubles, they might be able to pull out doubles in Ultimate. I don't think there's a chance that they pull out doubles in, in Melee. So I just think that it's it's just clear to me that Fargo and Mango are just going to wash them. Okay. I like that mindset. Uh, something else happening. The EE -E Talent Show. Da -da -da -da. That's right. My talent show is back this time with $500 in cash prizes, merch, free passes, and more. If you guys want to enter, make sure you sign up at the link below EE's -E Talent Show document. You just got to confirm that you'll be entering it in person between Friday and Saturday with your boy. Uh, I wanted to have Light and Cosmos as judges, but Cosmos won't be there, and Light probably will refuse to participate. Uh, but what nonetheless, day is it? Uh, it's on Saturday. <laughs> I refuse to participate. All right, there you go. <laughs> but if you guys don't, please enter my talent show because it's going to be fun, and I'm putting a lot of effort into this. Is Coney going to SmashCon? 
Yeah, he lives like an hour from there, of course. I don't mean no with him. Anyway. <laughs> No doubt. I just want to know you, if he was going. You know, go. damn well, he he going to be live in the venue. Mm, that's a fact. I can't wait. It's a good time. SmashCon is going to be a very good event. Well, no matter what happens, SmashCon is always a good time. I always recommend that people go there or Supernova. It is just an experience that I think everyone should try once. You know, it's a good time. And that sounds like a pitch for something else, but I'm not going to. Hey, hey, yo. Hey. Want to get a little bit more in detail for me? I actually do not. But how about these details as we're going to transition all the way out of Smash? Look, I've, listen, have you guys been keeping up at all with, like, the Olympics? Like, just at all? Any interest in Here and there, yeah. Here and there, yeah. I'm kind of the same way, right? I'm like a hero. I, kind I of heard about that uh, one guy that got a zero in the diving competition. Well, yeah, he should have got tragic. a zero. His dive was trash. <laughs> Like, don't train 20 years and do, do a backsplash, Jim. <laughs> I could have stuck that Amen. landing better. That's insane. I, I, I got a lot of respect for that guy because in, in his interview, he, he said it's not the first time that he's ever failed to dive. It's not the first time anyone else has failed to dive. That's and right. He was like, he was, was, was like how, how many people can you ask that they fail a dive in the Olympics training for, or representing their country, embarrassing themselves in front of thousands of people while keeping a smile. I was like, that's real shit. That is I real. felt yeah, that for real. a year and a half. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> Cosmos has been diving for a while. Oh, man. He's I've, still been back, I've been backsplashing for a long time. Some <laughs> say he's still falling. <laughs> oh my I'm God. still in the water. That is so funny to me. That's tragic. Well, I brought that up because I saw a post the other day uh, that kind of made me sad. And I'm going to put it on screen. So there will be no Mario and Sonic games at the Olympics. I guess for next year's Olympics, I guess that's what they were like planning to well, do. Well, the Olympics four years, right? Yeah, I guess it was like, yeah, every four years. So I guess they're planning to do that. They canceled it in their partnership in favor of esports and NFTs. Very uh, huh. interesting. Huh. This is huh. I, didn't, I didn't even know NFTs were still a thing. So, I I I saw the one thing about them saying that, or something on Twitter saying that, like they were expecting they were there was announced that they confirmed that they would end up doing an esports Olympic games. Yes, at some point that is happening. Um, apparently. So, but like I don't like. I guess I bring this up to be like, what games like would we want to see in the Olympics? Like. I think they said they're not going to have any shooters. So, like, no Apex and no, like, Call of Duty and stuff like that, which I thought was strange. But well, Smash I mean, can't be in it because Japan won't let us. Well, maybe. I mean, you don't know. Like, if it's the Olympics, maybe Japan is like, well, this is prestigious. Like, we'd like to see. Uh, I think Smash would actually. I think Smash would actually have a shot, especially if it's a new title four years from now. I think it's a shot. Yeah, I think Smash would end up being in it. I think, I think, um, Games like legacy games, like there would be Tetris in it, and, like stuff like that. I, I think like legacy games like that. Obviously, games like Street Fighter and, and stuff. There's games that are like legacy games, not necessarily popular games, but legacy games would end up being Wii boxing, <laughs> Wii, bo <laughs> Wii sports, Wii golf. There was like whoever something beat, that was similar. Whoever to beats Matt first wins the the gold medal. <laughs> Definitely, um, probably N NBA 2K or some would probably be there. I could see them doing a sports game, like maybe not NBA, maybe NFL, actually, just because NBA is actually physically there with Team USA yeah. and all the other teams. But NFL is not present. Maybe they do something with FIFA. I don't know. Like, it's it's so it's fun to speculate about um, because you just don't know. Like when I heard that them say that there wouldn't be shooters present, I was like, that takes a lot of things off the table. Like, does Fortnite yeah. fall in that category? Because Fortnite is worldwide just popular as hell. But it's not like a, a violent shooter. It's a cartoony one. You know what I mean? Like. Could yeah. multiverses be there in place of Smash? You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know. There's so many different ways right. to go about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Jesus I don't know. Christ. All I know is I want to be there representing my country on the microphone. Me too. If you I'm get to be, be there representing bro, USA, Mexico, and Japan. Bro, if you get to the Olympics, that's actually, like, crazy. I, that's it, yeah. bro. I, I won. I won. Yeah, you like, won. If that actually happens, I don't care what game it is. I'm going to make it my goal to win a medal in whichever game I decide to play. You'll still be poor, but you've won. Yeah. 
Well, you can. Yeah. I think you can pawn your medals because they're real gold. I would just that. No, I would have to keep that metal, bro. I would make a replica. Oh, you could three D print one and then sell the real one for the money. Three D print one. <laughs> I mean, don't do that though. It's an honor. <laughs> when I, it's an honor, you gems. Don't don't do that. Just throwing it out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, uh, that's really cool. I mean, that's pretty much all the stuff happening in and outside of the Smash Brothers world that I caught up with for this week. Um, nothing too crazy, but definitely some fun things to talk about and discuss and theorize. Uh, gentlemen, do you have anything else you'd like to contribute? I'm at the end of yeah, our sure. show. Yeah, sure, man. Um, up until SmashCon, I've been going to a lot of tournaments. I'm going to defend the North this weekend. Ooh, so, really? Who's I'm, going? Who's going to that tournament? Uh, New York people, and okay. I don't know everyone specifically who's going. But the thing about Tri-State is that they just have a huge group of high-level players, so it's going to be a good time. A lot of weird matchups going to be trying to figure out. Uh, going to enjoy the event as much as I can. I've been in this weird spot lately, and I don't know why. I guess it's just hard. Uh, I've been trying to pick up the game since I moved again, and it's just not working. Like, I am just not playing, like, not even, like, playing to my expectations. Like, my mindset's just not there. Like, I, I can't do things that I want to do. My hands are freezing up. I don't know if it's, like, out of fear, because there's nothing wrong with my hands as far as I know. A lot of weird shit, you know? And I'm just not, that. I'm just not that. playing good. Yeah, no, I'm just not playing good. Like, I think I had one moment of playing good since I've been back. And it was when I was fighting Miles the Yoshi um, on Tuesday and he almost two owed me. And while like, I think it was just like, you, you know, like when your back's pushed against the wall, you just top player mode out of nowhere. Like I played it really well and then I just couldn't replicate it. You know, like I, I couldn't do it the entire day. I was struggling to see things that are usually very clear in my head and I'm a little worried, you know, that's why I'm going to all these events. Cause I'm trying to get ready as fast as possible for smash con, but the bro, sometimes you just lose it for a bit and it takes a while for it to come back, I guess. And it is, it is a process, but I'm hoping that I can be ready before smash con. Cause I usually have, except for last year, I actually have a pretty good track record at smash con. Yep. I think, I think I've, top eight every smash con and ultimate except for the last one so i would like to at least stay consistent and get back to top eight there and potentially win i mean i won fall fest so i like to win smash con so yeah i mean even though i'm not playing to what i want to be playing i haven't lost a tournament yet i'm going to try to keep winning keep it up i mean that's understandable and i think at the end of the day it comes down to like you said whenever your back's against the wall your, your top player instincts come out and that this happens whenever you also are at a big tournament so whenever you yeah. go to smash con your body is going to lock in for you and you will get into the zone and then you will just end up playing better and better as the tournament pro- progresses because you'll be playing against harder people and your body will rem- remember like if you play against tweak you have to lock in like you don't have yeah. a choice you don't have a choice you have to lock in yeah, because it's like it's not a matter of me like not playing the game. Like I'm playing it. It's just I'm not locking in when I should be. I'm kind of thinking about what you said, where you feel like I'm just kind of as good as the player I'm playing against. And it's like so like I haven't played any top players. Recently. Yeah, I haven't played any top players recently, so I'm just not hitting them back as hard as they're hitting me. But then like I'm like still barely scraping through beating like people who respectfully I should just be destroying, you know? So it's like True. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm still winning, but I, I gotta fight. I gotta fight even better players. I gotta keep going up. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You're gonna beat. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna do well, cause I, cause you have the added advantage that you haven't had at these events you've been going to. You'll have me there cheering for you and holding that water in case you need a sip, my boy. I got you. We got a good track record with that. You said what? I said we have a good track record with that. We do. I you see. That's one thing people don't realize. I'm actually very supportive of my homies. Okay. I will be there and I will lose my voice. I'll lose my commentary voice cheering for my people. And guess what? They still going to pay me because, nigga, I got a contract. That's what I'm saying. And we just had a great episode. This was episode 68 of Lights Out. <laughs> Truly hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, it's going to be a lot of good stuff. Uh, Smash Con not, or Supernova not too far away. Uh, Riddles will be our special guest next week, which will be so hype. Uh, we'll Defend the North this weekend. Check it out. Defend the North this weekend. I'll I'll watch part of it because I want to watch a light win. 
So I'll watch Party here on the stream. You know the vibes all the time, chat. Uh, Light will be back next week with his camera. Cosmos may or may not have the shades on. Um, but you know what? That's just the fun thing about Lights Out. You always got to tune in to the next one because you never really know what you're going to expect. Right? Nigga. That's true. Also, you know what? Hmm. Nah, I won't say this on. I won't say this on the episode. We'll, say it. <laughs> no, I won't say. It. And we'll, <laughs> no, I'll save it for after. We'll do it after the after. If you're here live for it, you're here live for it. If you aren't, that's unfortunate. But thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the vibes. Lights out. Concluded for this week. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. Peace. Yeah.